Okay, so what we want to do for this section is take our prepped PSD file, in my case this Abe Lincoln file, which has uh, a decent mask on it. You can see it's very blurry on the edge, but that's because I want to blur him into the black background. But this will work, so I'm going to take this, save it out, and open it in Illustrator. In this case, we have Lincoln here. I like to work with my files undocked. And what we want to do is we want to create a, a, a series of horizontal text using our Google Doc that you've laid out already and bring it in here um, one line of text at a time and put it over his face, not all the way over it, but at a certain size. And then we're going to take that back into Photoshop and manipulate it later. So. What we want to do is, is lock our current layer, create a new one, and I'm going to just go to my Google Doc, which is over here. No, that's not it. There we go. And in my Google Doc, you can see that I've created uh, sort of longer sentences, phrases, words, uh, 15 of them, I believe, 15 lines, and I'm going to bring them over one at a time this time. Unlike the first topography project, you can't just copy and paste this into it. you got to bring it over one at a time because we want to be able to manipulate each line separately. So I'm going to go ahead and if I just triple click on Abraham Thomas Lincoln, control C to copy, alt tab back over to Illustrator, grab my text tool, click. I want to make sure I have white, but I'm going to paste that in there first. With my text tool, I'm going to change it to white double click on my fill to white I'm then going to go to my window workspace typography which will give you a little different layout give you some your character window sort of expand so you can see some other things and I'm gonna make this text uh, I think 48 so we can see it and I'm gonna change the font to I believe I like century school book bold for this project. In this case, it's okay to have sort of uh, a little bit of narrower lines in our font. Uh, we do want it to be legible in the end, but it doesn't have to be nearly as bold as in typography number one. So I'm just going to put this here. I'm going to copy and paste this down and then continue that process um, until I have them all on my screen, in which case I will speed this up so you don't have to sit through this process. Control C to copy, Control F to paste in place, move down, Alt tab over, triple click, Control C to copy, Alt tab, get my text tool, triple click, Control V to paste. And it's okay if it extends past the side of the artboard. Uh, we'll fix that later. Control C, Control F, move it down, Alt tab, triple click, Control C. Alt tab back, T for text tool, triple click, control V to paste. And again, I'm going to speed this up. Okay, now that I've finished getting all the text in here, I'm going to shift select uh, several lines of text and change. Uh, the font size, you want to have nice variation with this. So we're just going to shift select um, different ones. You may want to uh, use visual hierarchy to help you with this. Um, otherwise, it's not a huge deal. This is more of an exercise. So I'm going to select those four. I'm just going to bump font size down. I might bump a couple up a little bit. Uh, take a couple of the smaller ones, bump them way down, and let's take them like that, and let's see, let's do Kentucky and Emancipation Proclamation, we'll move them down to get a nice variety in there. So that looks good. You can always adjust it as we go, but now what we want to do is just create a... Um, in fact, I'm going to get these to fit on screen, so I'm going to bump these down a little bit too. We want to get nice horizontal alignments with some variation in it. 
that even bumped his name up. That's sort of important. So, And what I mean by that is we want to get these close. In the end, what we want to do is be able to cover his face in Photoshop, not in Illustrator, but in Photoshop, with some words that are um, relatively close together. The more pixels we have over the top of his face, better off our image is going to look and I will show you how to do that here in a few minutes but I'm going to lay these out just so there's no not many gaps if any even if there are some it should be okay in the end it's about the same size so I'm going to drag that down there and put that there It's okay if we have it offset a little bit. That should work there. Um, now what we're going to do is we are going to export our text as a ping. And to do that, I'm going to unlock and delete my A Blinken layer. I'm going to select all these just to make sure I can see them. And then go to File, Export, Export As. Make sure it's set to ping. I'm going to just going to call this... Blinken text to Photoshop export. I wanted to add 150 PPI because we are bringing it into our PSD of Lincoln. That is 150 PPI. So I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go back into Photoshop. Now we're going to go back to work in Photoshop. And to do that, I'm just going to open. And I'm just going to open it up. And I'm going to select all by hitting Control A, Control C to copy, and Control V to paste. And you'll notice that it comes in at approximately the same size. And if you'll notice, uh, some of the text is hard to read. I've always told students that, hey, you got to make that text pop. And in this case, we really want to make it pop. So what do we do? Well, we're going to add a drop shadow to my layer 3. By going to my effects, drop shadow, bottom one. I'm just going to adjust this. I don't want it too far away. We just sort of want a nice little bump in it. That'll work. That separates it enough. And maybe take it down a little bit more. Yeah, I like that about right there. I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to duplicate the heck out of our text layer. So I'm actually going to right click and rasterize layer style so it'll lock that drop shadow in. And I'm going to move this up here, duplicate. I'm going to move it over here, duplicate. And again, I'm going to cover the whole, the entire screen with this text. It's okay if it overlaps a little bit. Don't go overboard with it. You still want to be able to read some of the things that are written. We'll go here. And we'll go here. And if for some reason you feel in the end your work doesn't look very good, you can always go back into Illustrator, move your text around a little bit. Again, I'm just going to do this a little bit because I want to fill these gaps. Okay, that should work for now uh, because I know the next step, which we're going to merge all these layers together to make one big text layer. Then we're going to duplicate it and then rotate it so it's vertical. Um, I'm just going to select my top layer, hit Control E on my keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Now we have it all in the same layer. And I'm going to duplicate it. Go to my bottom layer, my bottom text layer, go edit, transform, rotate 90 degrees clockwise. And I'm just going to move that around, just sort of wiggle it, just to make sure, again, I'm trying to cover all of the gaps. That should work. Let's get one right there. On the... All right, that'll work. Now I'm going to merge that down, and I'm going to create a smart object, convert to smart object with that layer. I'm going to hide my Lincoln layer and 
what I'm going to do is add that displacement map that you created in the beginning of this particular project. So to do that, you have to go to Filter, Distort, Displace, 10, 10, Stretch to Fit, Repeat Edge Pixels is good. Go OK. Now you have to go find your displacement map. Mine's called Lincoln Displacement. Again, this is why we name things properly. I can find it pretty easily. Go to Open, and you'll see a slight adjustment there. So what we're going to do now is create a composite snapshot of our image. And we're going to do that by hiding the text layer, clicking on the thumbnail of our individual, and hitting Control, Shift, Alt, E. All three of those buttons plus E. We get a composite, and we're going to hide our original and move our our new composite up to the top and then what happened was it sort of merged these two layers together because we had this hidden it didn't merge that together so we just got these together with that nice black background we moved the layer up to the top we're going to show our uh, text layer again but we're going to change our blend mode for that layer to linear burn and you're going to see that pop through now the last thing we want to do is adjust our levels on our image so that um, Lincoln shows through a little bit more and again to do that is to create an adjustment layer with levels and I'm just going to start playing with my sliders obviously we don't want it darker I'm going to take my medium medium tones up and bump my light ones up quite a bit and that should be good but you can see how our text sort of um, wrapped around his face using that displacement map to be honest I'm not real happy with this result uh, I think we would get a better result if I made the text smaller. Uh, you would get better lines. You would get it to follow the face a little bit better. But this is the general idea. So again, it all comes down to what you're satisfied with in the end. It could be very easy to go back and just get rid of this smart object layer and redo the text over the top and sort of redo the exercise if you're not satisfied with this. But that's the end of the tutorial. Um, to submit it, we need to flatten the whole thing. Discard in layer is fine. Go to File, Save As, Save As a JPEG, and submit it with the appropriate naming convention.